All right, what's going on YouTube? Today we have a video about college applications. Now, a lot of you are probably in the process of completing and finishing off your college applications. You might be saying to yourself, should I apply early action? Do I do early decision? What do those mean? Today in this video, I'm gonna explain all of that and more, so let's get right into it. Today I'm going to discuss four different types of college application submissions. Number one, early action, then I'm gonna get into early decision, then I'm gonna talk about rolling admissions, and then I'll talk a little bit about regular decision so you guys can make a decision as to what's right for you. So let's talk a little bit about early action. So the early action deadline is coming up, that's why I'm doing this video now. We're looking at November 1st or November 15th for most of you. Now you might wanna know what, what's the difference between early action and early decision. Well, it's very important. Early action is non-binding. Basically, you're just going to find out early if you get it or not. You're gonna be placed in a separate category of students that submitted their application early and you will get your decision early as well. Now, there's a few outcomes that you could get. You might not get accepted. You could be accepted, hopefully you will be. You also could be outright rejected, which sometimes doesn't happen because there's a third option, which is that you are deferred. So your application will be put off to the regular application cycle, which ends or starts, I guess, on January 1st. All of the regular decision applications will have to be in by then. So those are kind of the outcomes that you could expect. So a good question is, should I apply early action or not? Well, it's kind of up to you. Now, we want to weigh the positives and negatives. So one of the positives is you will know early. Another positive is you may have a slightly better chance of getting in because you're showing the school that you are very, very interested. Now, the problem is that's not always the case. And the shocking fact is that in some schools, the early application uh, status students actually perform worse and they have worse outcomes. That's probably because there's higher competition with those students because they're all very qualified and they're all very prompt. They're applying early. They're getting all their stuff done early. So you need to look at the individual school you're applying to to make a decision as to whether that's a good idea or maybe not so good idea. I think the main appeal and my conclusion about early action is just knowing early. You have your application done early and you have your decision early and you can say, I'm off to college and withdraw all your other applications. The other great part is that you have a choice. So if you do get accepted to your early college and, you, and circumstances change, maybe you get accepted to one of your REACH schools, you can pull out and go to that school as well. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. Now, our next type of application, the early decision application, gives you a lot less flexibility and let's talk about that one now. So early decision, very similar to early action. You have the November 1st or possibly November 15th deadline, but the problem is with early decision is that you are bound, technically, legally bound, that if you are accepted, you have to go to the school. Now, what are the positives and the negatives of that kind of application? Well, the positives are you're gonna really show the school that you are super interested. So your demonstrated interest component is gonna be very high. You are committing legally to go to the school if they take you. That's very attractive for them because they know they have you, like you will attend. The problem is then they know they don't have to give you a lot of scholarships, they can offer you less aid. It kind of puts you in a bad financial situation. So if you don't have to worry about paying for college, maybe your parents haven't figured out, that could be a very attractive angle. If you're looking for scholarships, it may not be such an attractive angle because you're kind of putting the school in the driver's seat. Now, I know a lot of you are probably asking me, Nick, can I get out of it? Like, is it like you're saying it's legally binding, but can I get out? I would say the answer to that is also yes and no. Could you get out of it? Probably. Would you want to try? No. I mean, there's gonna be a lot of issues there when you try to get out of that. You will definitely be rejected from the school and no longer able to attend. And you, you may somehow be rejected from other schools. I have heard stories. Now, people claim they're not theoretically supposed to tell other schools about that, but I have heard of situations where students have had multiple kind of situations ruined by trying to get out of that situation. So I honestly haven't had a student try to do that, but um, I definitely wouldn't try. 
So although you are signing something when you apply ED, I believe the guidance counselor as well has to sign off on this. They can't force you to go, right? That would be akin to some sort of slavery, right? They're just making you go there and start studying. They can't do that, right? So if you really can't go, then nothing negative is going to happen to you other than you probably won't be able to go to that school. The problem is it's probably not a very good practice for you in general to apply ED to a school and then kind of just totally change that. Could you get out of it? Yes. Would that create a very adverse situation for you and probably embarrass your guidance counselor and your school? That also would happen. So are you forced to go? No, but it is a very strong uh, relationship that you're forming with the school. Now, I guess the question is, can you or should you use that to your advantage and say, okay, I'm going to ED, but if I end up not wanting to go, just forget it. I wouldn't do that. That probably would set a very bad precedent for yourself. The one good reason that you can get out of ED is if you're financially unable to pay for the school. So if you maybe had some, some loan offers coming in or you thought you might be able to swing it if you got a certain scholarship, and uh, you know you don't get that, then you know you're pretty much able to get out of it. I think that's a very reasonable reason to say, okay, like I really wanted to go to your school, but you know my circumstances have changed, my parents lost their job, so on and so forth. Then you could probably get out of it without that much of a situation, especially if you're say going to attend a state school or community college, something like that, that's much more affordable, I think everyone would understand that. That said, there's also some little wrinkles and other kinds of applications that might afford you some more flexibility. So you also have what's called restrictive early action, and that is provided by some schools which I have listed here, such as Harvard, Princeton, Stanford, University of San Diego, and Yale, which allow you uh, to apply early action, which is not binding, but you're only allowed to apply to that one school as well as possibly some state schools and other affordable schools, because what they're looking at is, is this an affordability measure? Like, can you afford the school? If you can't, we're not gonna hold you to it. Like, that's kind of not fair. So I think that's a good middle ground between ED and DA, and I like that a lot of schools have that. Now, one of the final kinds of admissions is kind of a unique one, it's called rolling admissions. So that is where a college just reviews applications as they come. Now, how can you use that to your advantage? Well, what you wanna do there is get your application in as early as possible. If you get in early, they'd be very likely to consider you because they know, okay, if we, we have a good student on our hands now, let's not wait for a better one later. So um, you can have a very good opportunity there if you can get your application in early. In that circumstance, you also have your decision back very early so you can know what college you're attending really quickly. Now, the last piece of advice, and the one thing I wanna mention about all of these styles is that even if you're bound, even if you applied early action, you should try to negotiate your merit award. If you are a top level student, if you are on the 75th percentile in any of these schools, you should be asking them for money. If they provide you with nothing, you have to ask for it. So that's one thing that a lot of students ask, like, am I, am I foreclosed from getting any money if I go ED? Like that's a big fear. Yes and no, like you probably won't get awarded as much, but I have heard students asking for something or, um, or getting something even in an ED scenario. So at the end of the day, what you guys wanna do is consider which option is right for me. Obviously, each school has their own available admission styles. That can affect whether you wanna to apply to a school or not, but you should really consider very strongly before you do something like an ED or an EA because you might not be able to you know, remove yourself from that situation or you might not be able to you know, get involved with another school that you wanna get involved in. So besides making the decision as to what kind of application you're going to submit, you also have to do a lot of essays. I have another awesome video that I did on that that you can check out now.